In this video I'm going to take you through a few of the basic shape tools. We'll start off with the line tool which is for beneath the selection tool and you'll see it here. I will just click on the tool there and you'll see that it can be brought up with the, the shortcut backslash which is uh, just underneath your backspace key on your keyboard. We'll start by drawing and you'll notice the green line that seems to be lining up my cursor with existing geometries. That's a smart guide uh, which I generally leave on all the time and you'll learn more about in the um, in the guides and constraints video. So start by clicking and dragging and you'll see the blue path uh, indicates um, the origin and destination of the line and if I release you'll see the line has been created with an appearance of a 0.5 millimeters uh, 0.5 millimeter stroke. It will go into strokes in another video and I can draw them all over the place. You can see the information box being right up next to the cursor indicating the distance and the degree from the origin. So if I stick it straight up it'll be about 90 degrees and on the horizontal it is about 0 degrees or just below 360. Okay. Okay, so if I go and have a look at some of the other tools that are underneath the line segment tool, if I hold, uh, click and hold down on the tool, you'll see the arc tool, spiral tool, and a few others pop up which enable us to draw a few different geometries. The arc tool, for example, is one that I use quite often. Um, and if I click once, and this is the same with all the geometries you will, all the basic shapes you will see, it gives me an, the option to generate the arc from a, a list of parameters. So the length, um, x, y, the type of arc, open or closed. Um, so if I click OK with all the defaults, you'll see a arc is just generated. This is extremely useful. I'll just delete that. Um, by the way, I'll just show you how you can draw an arc. So you can imagine that would be a very useful uh, tool. I'll just delete that. If I go back and select my line tool and click once, say I will click on the end of this line, you can see it's snapping to the end of that line. I click once. We are able to select our angle, which you can do intuitively, or you can select an exact angle, so 75%, and, and a length of, say, 50 millimeters. Okay and there you see our um, line is generated. Okay, now we'll have a quick look at some of the other basic geometries. If uh, we go to, um, next to the uh, line tool and we hold down, we'll see there's a few different um, options for creating solid shapes, including rectangle tool, the rounded, cornered, rounded corner rectangle tool, and the ellipse tool. I'll leave the ellipse tool selected at the m um, for the moment. Now, if I click and drag in the artboard you'll see it gives me a width and height for the ellipse um, and you'll see if we try to make the width and height the same it creates a circle so if you want to create a circle the quickest way to do that is to hold the shift key the shift key creates a geometrical constraint on any geometry that you are creating um, and snaps it to the nearest uh, desired constraint so in this case it's creating a perfect circle so I can create a number of circles by holding the shift key and continuing to drag. Now I'll just select those and delete them and I'll go and get my rectangle tool and you'll see it is the same case. If I hold down the shift key it creates, a con it constrains it to a square. If I click, as we saw in the previous uh, example of, of the line tool, it offers us the choice of creating from the origin of our click a width and height and that will extend uh, down and to the right of the cursor because that is the direction from um, the uh, in the direction of the ruler ascending so if I turn on the rulers go down to view rulers and show rulers you'll see the zero point is in the top left hand corner of the um, page and the ascending numbers in both direction are down and right across the page okay now a few other things we'll have a look at first of all I'll show you what the other the constraint tool can do with a line tool if I click and drag but hold shift it snaps it to 45 degree angles so quite useful if you want to create a horizontal line 
or several. Okay, now we'll have a look at a couple of other basic shape tools, and these are the freehand drawing shape tools, just underneath the uh, last two shape tools that we had a look at before. Um, so you can imagine that the first two that we looked at, the line and the square, uh, the rectangle will be very good for drawing architectural geometries like uh, windows and uh, other things, floors. Um, however, if you want to get a bit more graphic design, a bit more sketchy, um, you can try out some tools like the paintbrush tool. And I'll just zoom in and give an example of what that might look like. So if we're in a space, uh, we'll put, the, put it over here. Um, and I'm using a Wacom tablet for this example. Uh, come and have a, a talk to us if you want to find out what that is, but it's a tablet that basically allows you to draw as a mouse. So if I'm sketching a person just quickly, you can do that. So sort of, you can put a hat, a little bit of hair, and I'm just drawing with the Wacom tablet at the moment, or if I want to draw a person with their head down. so just a little bit of sketch here, as though you would with a pencil. So there's a few little sketchy architectural people. Now if you go and get your direct selection tool and hover over the objects, you'll see that they are in fact composed of individual paths. So they aren't as though they were in... Um, not, so it's un unlike uh, Photoshop which, which draws pixels, it draws a path and it attributes a particular appearance to it. So if I get the uh, selection tool and select that object, you'll see in the control bar we can change those strokes. We won't do that in this video, it's for another video. Uh, using the direct selection tool we can edit that path as well, uh, just to show you the true power of this um, of these tools as opposed to Photoshop, so we can tweak this person to be exactly how we might want uh, maintaining the sketchiness. But You'll learn more about that in a future video. The next tool is the uh, pencil tool, very similar. Um, so there we go, another shape, uh, slightly different though. Um, if you double click on the pencil tool, and this is the case for most tools, if you want to see if you can edit their properties, you'll see we can change the smoothness, we can change the fidelity, um, and uh, a few other options down there I won't go into. I'll delete that for the moment. Um, underneath that we have the shape builder, sorry, the blob brush tool, which you can get with shift and B. By the way, if you go to the drop-down menu of the pencil, you'll see there's the smooth tool which enables you to edit the pencil tool and erase paths, individual paths as well. So have a play with those at some point if you want to find out how uh, configurable these things are. So I've got the shape builder tool here at the moment. I'll double click on that and you'll see we can change the size of the tool. So if I want to make that a bit smaller, we'll say 6 and uh, play with those other options to see what they are. And I've got my Wacom tablet here. And let's uh, go out for a moment, actually. Let's just say I wanted to just write my name. Uh, sign my name on my document, like that. Uh, probably do it a little smaller um, <laughs> uh, if I was actually signing my name. And I probably wouldn't do it in, on top of my elevation in dark black, but anyway for the sake of this example I'll zoom in to show you what the shape build, uh, this blob tool is. So you can just go in and colour in little bits there, colour in that, and put another a dot above the A, which looks a bit like an I. Okay, so if we get the direct selection tool and go and have a look at this um, shape, it isn't in fact a single path with a shape attributed, it's um, a fill inside a path and it's a very intelligent tool which is new to CS5 I believe um, that once using the path editing tools which you'll learn more about in a future video we can again edit but not editing the an individual path in fact we're editing the outside of the shape so that's really yeah that gives you quite a few possibilities so you can do something quite on the fly and like the other example go back and refine the hell out of it so I'll just might delete some of those anchor points and you can see that we're able to play around with it to no end. Okay, there's one last thing I'll show you in the basic shape tool video segment and that is how to use the eraser tool. So I'll click on the eraser tool there and if you hold down you'll see the few others, scissors and knife. I'll just explain the eraser tool for the moment. Quite uh, simply, if you drag it across a bunch of geometries 
it erases that geometry. It does it quite cleverly though if I get the direct selection tool. Um, as you'll see it's divided the path in two, and three and four in this case, um, by just deleting the path that was in the eraser circle, which I'll get back by pressing Shift E for the shortcut, um, which was in its way. So if I go through the basic shape tool, you'll see it's exactly the same case where I'll press A, shortcut for my direct select tool, it has created a new path that enables the appearance of an erased object. So a very intelligent tool um, which enables you to erase all uh, path um, objects and um, basic geometries.